So, uh, hi guys, my name is Michal, and today I'll, I'll tell you something about the struggle I had uh, with file locking while implementing this feature for libvirt. Um, so, as you may know, libvirt allows you to start a virtual machine, or domain as we call it, under just any user, really, uh, in your system. However, in order to do that, it needs to change the ownership of the file or, you know, set uh, Linux content, context uh, of, of all the files that the, that the domain is going to touch. But that's not the end of the story. Uh, later, when domain is uh, shut off, it needs to restore um, the ownership of the files because it may contain some sensitive data, like, I don't know, some, some passwords or some other uh, kind of info. So my feature was um, that, um, so basically, um, when, it, when it did restore <coughs> the file, uh, it returned it to root root because it hadn't, hadn't uh, stored the original owner anywhere. So my feature was uh, we store it in the extended attributes. But this poses a problem because uh, Chone and set Falcon uh, are atomic on their own. But if you, you know, wrap them around some extended attributes work, the whole section is no longer atomic. So you need um, some way to mutually exclude with other demons that are trying to do the same over the same file. So that's one scenario where you need um, file locking. The other, typically SQLite, for instance. So if you have your database in one uh, file, to enhance concurrency, you might want to allow it to, you know, um, to, for, if you, if for instance, if you have queries that run on two uh, different tables, you might want to allow them to run in parallel, you know, to enhance concurrency. Um, but, but in order to do that, you need to be able to lock only some parts of the file, those parts that you are touching, not the whole file at once. Um, and the third typical example where you definitely need um, file locking are PID files. So question, how would you implement, um, you know, so if, imagine that you have a daemon that is supposed to be running only at one instance most in your system. So how would you achieve that? Anybody knows the answer? Yeah, so, but you know, that's, that's a file lock again. Right, so you can, you can have a PID file uh, that you will write your own PID into it and the second time you start a daemon, the second instance will come, read the PID file. It will probably be uh, more clever and check whether the PID still exists, but that's not enough. Because the first instance might have crashed, for instance, leaving the PID file behind. Uh, and another process might just, might just, have, just have taken the uh, PID because of, you know, of, the, of the PID response. Uh, so we need a file locking um, so that the second uh, instance, when it starts up, it will either fail to log um, the PID file, meaning the first instance is still running, or it will success in, uh, um, succeed in uh, locking the file, meaning the first uh, instance is long gone. So as I was researching uh, what, can I, what APIs can I use to fix my problem there, um, I came to c conclusion that the, the situation that we are currently in can really be depicted by this picture. I mean, we have some sense of security, but really, you know, it's, it's not really a security. Um, so there are basically two major types of uh, file logs that you can use. First one are advisory, meaning application is responsible for placing the log uh, itself on appropriate places, which means you have to change your code and, you know, add uh, lock and unlock calls at appropriate places. And the second one is mandatory, where kernel is supposed to somehow um, come up with some sensible locking for your application so you don't need to change anything and everything just works out of the box, which sounds promising, doesn't it? But not really, we will see that. Um, and uh, advisory locks, basically there are three types. Um, all of them, like, this is not uh, really uh, specified anywhere, but they are supposed to be independent. So if you use BSD lock uh, in your application for, you know, to lock one file and the other application uses the POSIX file, uh, POSIX lock to lock the same file, it, in theory, it should succeed. But as we will see, that's not the case too. Uh, 
so BSD logs, how they work. Um, by the way, all the uh, APIs take file descriptor to work with. So we need to open the file, uh, and you need to open it for writing at least, because um, acquiring a log is viewed as a write operation. So we need to do that. And placing a BSD log is really simple. You just uh, take the file descriptor and say whether you want to log the file exclusively or, or in shared mode. This is similar to the way that uh, read-write uh, pthread logs work. Um, so you can, you can have multiple readers, one writer, you know. And uh, this looks very good, except you, can all, you will always log the entire file, um, which you know, doesn't really uh, suit the situation from the database world. It might suit the situation for libvirt and pit files, but it's not going to fly for libvirt either. Um, I mean, BSD logs are not POSIX, even though they are pretty available. Uh, they are still not POSIX, and on different platforms, they might dif behave differently than you would expect them to. For instance, um, if, you, if you run older Linux, and by older I mean two point something and older, uh, the API uh, does nothing and returns success. Now call me crazy, but I don't think that's the way you're supposed to implement an API. Uh, if you're a newer Linux, it may get silently converted to a different type uh, of, um, uh, of lock. For instance, on NFS, it's converted into a um, POSIX lock. So, so all of a sudden, you might start clashing with some other applications that are trying to uh, you know, log the same files as you do. And also, there's, there's no, uh, uh, lo no atomic lock promotion. I mean, even the main page says, the log promotion is done via unlocking and locking the file again, which definitely is not atomic. Okay, but we have we have the POSIX file logs, right? So they might be uh, they might be useful. So again, we open the file, we set up some structure uh, where we can tell whether we want to grab a read log or write log. Again, you know the same uh, meaning to that. We can all, we can um, we can then set which uh, portion of the file we want to lock. So in this specific example, I'm locking the second and the third uh, bytes of, of the file. And then we can even set whether we want to like set the lock and if it fails, return uh, instantly, or we want to wait for the lock to be set. We can even query the lock. Um, I mean, it looks, it looks good so far, doesn't it? So we can, we can log ranges. Uh, kernel does uh, even some deadlock uh, detection and prevention, which is which is good. Um, I mean, if you would deadlock, uh, you would get an error from the from the call there, and it works across NFS. So this looks promising, doesn't it? Yeah, not really. So the the logs are not inherited uh, into the child, which okay, you may you may you may argue that you, if you have an exclusive log, there should be. Uh, you know, one pit at most, which holds the uh, exclusive lock to a pit, but neither the shared locks are um, inherited to child, which I don't think it's sane. Uh, it doesn't work on Samba, which again, you might argue that you don't care about Samba, but <clears throat> the worst part of POSIX locks are uh, they're semantic when it, when it comes to close. I mean, if you have a trivial application where you open a file, lock it, uh, only read some bytes, write some bytes, and you know, close it, or I don't know, and die instantly, you're not linking with some other libraries, you're running in single-threaded mode, everything works nicely, and you, you really want to unlock the file on the close. But the problem is, it's the first close that releases the lock. So if you have multi-threaded application, and one thread opens the file, acquires the lock, and the other thread opens the file and closes it, it will release the lock, leaving the first, first thread thing, it still owns the lock, which is a problem. Okay, so you will work around that, like you will, you will re-implement open and close so that you defer closing the file until the very last moment when you know it's safe to do so. But the problem is, if you are linking in the library, you cannot do that. I mean, you can change your own application, but you cannot really re-implement the library, can you? Or you can, but do you want to, right? That's the question. <clears throat> okay, so you ditch all the libraries that you have, you re-implement everything yourself, and it still won't work. Because as you may know, 
um, files under Linux or basically any Unix can have multiple names. So if you open one file name, lock it, and the other thread opens and closes the other file name, you guessed it, it will release the lock. Which is, <clears throat> I mean, okay, this, this is, um, so if, really, if you have really simple application and single-threaded application, uh, POSIX lock work, they, they will mutually exclude with other processes, but not with the threads in the, in the same process. And oh, one thing that triggers my OCD, why the structure is called flock, which collides with the BSD, ah, I don't know, but okay. <laughs> Historical reasons, yeah. Um, okay, but uh, there's another API that we might use, uh, again, for post six logs, uh, it's called log F, um, but this is really just a fancy wrapper over the, the FCNTL. Um, it does basically not, nothing more, it, does the, it has the same capabilities. Okay, so when uh, Libbert, uh, I mean my kernel developers, Linux kernel developers saw that it's really, you know, there's nothing usable, they implemented um, open file description locks. Uh, it's not description, it's description, meaning the lock is associated with the description itself, not the file descriptor. Um, and then combined the two approaches, they taken the good parts from the previous two approaches and combined them into one. <clears throat> and this looks really usable. I mean, you can use anything and the, the locking behaves exactly the way you would expect it to. But the problem is, this is really just a Linux only. So if you care about portability in your system, you cannot use it. Uh, it's, def it's not even on BSD or anything else. I mean, they are trying to get it into POSIX, but you know, it's, it's a long run, so we'll see about that. Oh, it doesn't? I thought it does. Okay. Thank you. Um, but okay, so, you know, this is these analyzer logs, but um, we have, we, we still have, haven't covered the mandatory logs, which looks promising. I mean, you don't have to change anything, right? And it just works out of the box, doesn't it? Well, not really. I mean, even the main page says, do not use it. It's terribly broken. We are not going to fix it. I suspect it's because it uses POSIX logs under the hood. Um, but really, just do not use it. They are not going to fix it any time. And they are also racing, yeah. Yes, yes, there, there's a lot of trouble with it. So, I mean, the main page says do not use it. We're not gonna compile them into relay. Yeah. For the record, so those would be disabled. Right, so for the record, we are not gonna compile them into relay. <laughs> uh, so what's the solution? So, <clears throat> because Libert, cares about portability, uh, I had to use POSIX logs. But, you know, as I said, they work for really trivial applications that you have. So um, I, had to, I had to create a really small application that I could use, which basically is done by a fork. So if I fork, um, then I could, then I have single-threaded application with a small critical section that I can use. And that's basically the, the approach that Libbert used. Um, I mean, Libre links with a ton of other libraries, so we cannot, I mean, the POSIX look, look, look the, the best solution for us. SQLite, as I, as I said earlier, SQLite too uses POSIX logs, but if you read the code, and I really advise you to do that, they have like three screens, log, uh, three screens long uh, description of how they are using the POSIX logs. They very implemented everything, they use then pre-thread logs to, um, to mutually exclude the threads. And it's, it's, a, it's really a messy code, but <clears throat> you know, again, they care about portability, so they cannot really use anything else. And they also narrow down all the libraries, like they are linking only with three libraries, I guess, like libc and some other two basic libraries. And uh, for bit files, um, you can, it, it's safe to use BSD logs because you know, you, you, can, you can lock only, you, can, you don't care if you lock only a portion of the file or the whole file. Um, by the way, Libbyr couldn't use BSD locks um, because we are locking the same file that QMU is locking. So you might know that QMU does already some, some locking of the disks 
that it uses. Um, so if we were to use BSD logs, because of what I said earlier, we, you know, BSD logs might get translated into POSIX logs. So we might try to actually log the whole file and therefore we would deadlock with uh, QMU. So POSIX was the only option that I could go with. Uh, and I think that's it. If you have any questions, comments, please. Yes? Right, so, so the question is, what's the problem with POSIX logs and, uh, multi, uh, and multi-threaded applications? So if you have, uh, imagine you have an application that runs uh, in two threads, right? And one thread opens a file and locks it because it wants to work with it. And the other opens the file and closes, closes it immediately. And the other one is locking as well, or is it just like opening the Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Because the... At the, at, the, at the moment that the second thread calls close, all the logs for the file are released. Right, but you might okay. So, so you you might place uh, here it is. You may place uh, read logs, right? Which can be set. You know, you, um, you can have as many read logs as you want. So if you have two threads. Uh, they are doing read logs, right, for instance, and um, the first one acquires the read log, and let's, uh, let's suppose the second one places the read log too. The moment it, the one of the threads closes it, the, all the logs are released. Which it doesn't... Yes. Yes. Let's... Uh... Yeah, it's... Uh... It's associated with Dino, which which is the problem. Any other? Yeah. Why did you use the new stuff in Linux and use other sort of code? So the question is why I haven't used the uh, new stuff. As I said, Libert cares about portability. Libert has to run on BSD, so some other. Yeah, that could be an option too, but then you, have, you, you would have, have maintained two different uh, code paths, which, you know, poses a problem on itself. Yes. And also, yeah, that's a good point. Like, if you, if you have BSD running and it wants to change uh, extended attributes on, the, on, say, NFS, and you have a Linux machine running, you need to mutually exclude these two to, you know, Yes, so, so if you, they will. So if you, theoretically, if you were to do that, you would still be okay? So yes. Could, but then again, you have, you have, two, you, you have two cold parts that you need to maintain. So you had up there, too, on the, um, the OFD lock that they, um, or, or one of them that said didn't, they didn't work on SMB. What, how did, what did you mean there? Um, SMB, yeah, yeah plus it works. They don't, they don't work on Samba. Some amount. Uh, SMB mount. Okay, okay, so, so through SIPs. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, they do technically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technically. Is, uh, so, what, so essentially what happens is uh, uh, SIPs will translate uh, SCNCL lock calls into Windows locks. Yes. But they're mandatory, typically on yeah. Windows machines. Um, now, if, you, if you're talking over a SIPs mount, Samba, it uses um, the um, POSIX extension, and those will get translated into a normal SCNTL lock on the other yeah. end. And I'm not sure if Samba ever did use the OSD lock to SIP it. I Jeremy hounded us about, hounded me about it for ages, <laughs> and then I'm not sure he actually ever did the implementation. Not yet. <laughs> not yet, okay. <laughs> so in any case, yes, uh, so yeah. technically they do work on SMB, but you know, it really depends. As, as always, when you're mapping the it, yeah, to exactly. systems, it's not quite yes, one yes. one Right. <coughs> okay. Any other questions, comments? No? 
Okay, thank you.